Growing food is one thing, getting it to market is more difficult. In the world of South African agriculture, this is becoming a headache. Especially in our market where we are in the feed, uh, food and agriculture, um, you're getting the challenges that we have to overlook is uh, the road conditions, um, the distances that we travel with our vehicles. You're looking at time, time which is a challenge, uh, temperature, um, the condition of your vehicles. Uh, you have to maintain your vehicles, make sure that your vehicles are in a proper condition, uh, not to have any delays on the road or um, to, to, to prevent the birds from being delivered within time to make sure um, that you uh, uh, cut down on your mortalities of, um, of, of the birds. The days of using the South African railway seems to be coming to an end. Many rails have fallen into disrepair. Most of the, the customers moving actually away from, from uh, rail transport to road transport uh, because it's quicker, it's faster, um, and you get your product in time. It's not all those constraints that's uh, going hand in hand with uh, rail transport. One of the biggest freight issues in South Africa is costs, especially when it comes to the railways. It is said that in the next three months, logistic group Transnet will tap into the global debt market to raise a billion dollars to support its continued infrastructure investment projects. Meanwhile, South African farmers are struggling to get their produce to export markets. And Yanni de Villiers, if I could start with you on this one. One of the great ironies is, is that South Africa is producing food very well, very efficiently, but just can't seem to get it to where it's needed. Yeah, we, we're really struggling at the moment. I think the, the mix between what happened in the past, where we, we transported about 80% of all our grains by rail, and all the feed plants and the milling industry uh, plants were all bold to receive the, their grain by rail because grain is actually very rail friendly, it is very effective. We've installed some capital equipment that you can just tip a truck over you know, within eight minutes and so forth. But um, as the services um, and, and the railway lines deteriorated, um, so all the grains are moving onto the rail. So at the moment we've moved from like 80% on the rail to like 20% on the rail at the moment. And uh, at the moment the, the road is also like 20% you know, depending on the distance, is, is more expensive uh, than rail. So, at, uh, you know, we're adding cost to, to, the, to the already suffering consumers out there, and, and this is something that we really need to address in this country. Now, Erhard uh, Bredenhan, you're our soft commodities man. How is all of this chaos affecting prices? No, certainly, uh, rail is the most effective way of moving grain, uh, from a cost point of view in particular, but it needs to be reliable and, e and efficient. Uh, for, for to work and uh, certainly um, affects also uh, export parity prices if you can't move the product. I mean, Yanni, I mean, one of the, um, the great ironies is also most of the ports in South Africa are built to take railway lines. Um, why, what's happening? Yeah, I think the irony is uh, in this year when we, we, we sit with this huge surplus and we actually normally have shift our surplus into Africa where there were always, you know, the hunger and, and all these sort of problems. And recently, Africa has started to produce more, and all of a sudden, we have to shift more deep sea. And uh, I think uh, I've heard something last week that the port of East London is not functioning at the moment, um, and there's some problems, and, and they need some big money to inf uh, invest there to, to fix all of that. And this makes it very difficult for us. You sit with a surplus here, there's opportunity in the market, we can actually sell it to, to the foreign countries but we, we're having this problem with the, with the logistics. And I think this is the challenge that we're facing. And it's almost like an ESCOM story where um, we should have done that a few years ago and, 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 and looked ahead at, at this problem. But one thing uh, I don't understand, Erhard, surely it would be worth the state and the industry to throw money at the railway lines just simply to get this moving because that money surely is going to come back to the system through the exports. Very much so, but I think it's a, it's a long-term problem that has existed and uh, to solve it overnight it can be extremely difficult and uh, ordering of locomotives uh, took place uh, quite some time ago but we still haven't seen those arriving and the efficiencies and uh, the extra movement of volume taking place. Now you say South Africa is looking to deep water uh, destinations for its maize. What sort of markets are opening up around the world for the, our maize here? Yeah, we, we're not that familiar exporter, I think, so we, we have to do a lot of work, uh, especially the traders, 
Um, uh, we've looked at Korea as a market. I mean, obviously, we would like uh, to be on the list uh, of the Chinese. Um, they buy a lot at the, at, at the time, and if we can have being a permanent supplier to them, uh, that would be great. I think at the moment we're selling uh, some to the Middle East countries. There are some buyers there. And I've even heard some news that we've sold our first cargo to Spain in the European Union, which is quite a surprise to me because they were always this sort of GMO sensitive type of uh, uh, market, but uh, apparently the deal has been done. Really, well, that's quite interesting. Who would have thought South Africa would be exporting maize to Spain? How is the, the commodities market changing, bearing in mind all that we've talked about? Well, uh, very much. I mean, South Africa, is, as we've, uh, everybody is aware, is uh, now a large net export of maize with a 4 million ton uh, surplus of maize. So it's very important that we are geared towards that export uh, type of business. Um, and for the sustainability of, of, of uh, grain production in South Africa in the future, I think exports have become more and more important. Yeah, we, w w Chris, I think the other thing that we, we, we should also start looking at is how can we add value to, to the local surplus? Maybe we must you know, invest more in the poultry industry and, and, and instead of importing all our poultry, or some of it at least, uh, because there's a, a huge chunk of poultry that we're importing, and rather feed those those surplus of maize to some chickens here and create some jobs locally. And, and, and even, I mean, the whole biofuel debate, the minister has put it last week back on the agenda and say maybe we should look, start looking at those sort of things. And I think this will be great for job creation. This will be great for, you know, a, a lot of things. Um, and, and I think we, we should really look at the opportunities for value adding instead of just exporting everything to China. I mean, you're a strategist. Overall, looking at this, what is the worst case scenario, you think, if nothing's done about the cost and the problems with logistics? Well, certainly from a, from if we can't manage to, to move and export our, our surplus production, we're going to have to uh, reduce uh, production in South Africa, which is not a very good scenario at all. Um, and secondly, um, we are not competitive then globally as far as animal production is concerned. And we'll see more and more imports of, of animal products coming into the country and slowly but surely the agricultural production in South Africa uh, deteriorating. So it all sounds rather depressing, Yanni. I mean, if I'm a farmer, a um, grain farmer sitting out there in Hoblersdal or wherever, I mean, what would you say to me to even try and comfort me, maybe? <laughs> well, I think the, the whole fact that food security has been elevated to the, to the top priorities of government I think we will probably see in policy uh, a bit of change coming through. It might take a bit of time. Um, just to add to the risk um, that you were asking Erard about, um, we are net importers of wheat, uh, which goes into the bread. And I mean, if we can't import wheat uh, because of the problems in, in terms of logistics, I mean, obviously you, you, run, you, you might run out of bread for on the shelves like Zimbabwe for other reasons, but uh, uh, this is the typical type of risk. But I think for the farmers, I mean, they can still reach the markets. It's, it's too expensive, I think, and we can do it better and cheaper. But uh, I think there's a little uh, political will, social responsibility that they have to sit down and say, all right, we want to fix the railway lines. Where do we start first? And as Erard said, it's a long-term thing, but we need to start somewhere. I mean, and, and let's look at the grain corridors and start investing there.